Hello, coming to you today from the lovely Lake Havasu, which you see behind me. Um, so I almost feel like I've been holding out on you guys, but not in a in a way for your benefit. You know, I don't want to I don't want to share too early when I don't have enough evidence for something, right? Like I want to be pretty clear about what it is that I'm presenting to you and sharing with you and enrolling you in, right? So I, <laughs> you may know that um, 2023, it was like pretty much one extended dark night of the soul for me. And the sort of culmination, it was like, <clears throat> it was getting kind of worse and worse in the fall to the point where I was really starting to get pretty freaked out. Um, I, I, I moved into a van in August. And so I lost a lot of the sort of protocols that had been supporting me in my health, including like access to a bathroom, a bathtub, and, you know, easy ways to take my supplements and have like really healing epic foods that I was constantly eating and juices and all these things like lost it all at once. And but it, you know, but it was like a, it was sort of a slow accumulation that ended up, you know, through the fall, it started to sort of get worse and worse until, um, I'd say like really November, December, January, I was having such intensive episodes around, especially like leading up to the full moons around my menstruation time. And those were like the extreme times where like I literally was having like such intense sort of like anxiety, maybe depression, but like to the point of feeling like I needed to die of having these thoughts constantly running through my head, like I'm going to die, I'm going to die, you know, and um, but but then but also like a lot of the years spent with like an intensity of anger, you know, which I was in a really deep, still am in a way, in a really deep grief process of what transpired with my personal family. But, um, and anger is a part of the grief process, you know? So I, I embraced it in a way, um, but it felt like there was this like avalanche of, <laughs> avalanche of anger and it was just so intense and I was, you know, doing my best to learn how to process and metabolize it how to not repress it but how to express it but like in a way that was you know slightly more productive <clears throat> so I learned a lot of things like you know dancing it out and screaming it out and <clears throat> journaling this special kind of journaling called journal speak where you just like let it rip on the page you know you speak from like whatever deepest wounded part there is and just let it go so I don't, you know, shorthand, I call the rage journaling because that's pretty much what it was for me for months upon months upon months, days upon days, pages upon pages upon pages, notebooks upon notebooks, you know, and like, you know, you're supposed to burn this stuff. You're supposed to shred it, get rid of it. It's, it's just a, it's just a release process. But, but I just found that the anger was like endless. It was just endless. And, and one of the. And so it would come every day in like multiple waves to the point where I was just like in tears as to, to be in so much anger and hatred. And um and one of the like main features of this like really painful time was the experience of immediately upon waking, actually usually before I even woke up. So like right as your consciousness is basically coming back into this reality, I felt like I would be like electrocuted by stressful thought and the stressful thought and I would either basically my nervous system would like immediately go into like fear and anxiety or I would be stimulated into anger and I pretty much started my day like this every day for months and it didn't matter like what kind of meditations I was doing before bed it didn't matter what kind of meditations I was doing before or when I woke up 
it was literally happening before I even had those choices, you know, to think a thought, really. And my evening practice routine was pretty, you know, was pretty good. And I did at least a 30 to 40 minute meditation before bed each night. Throughout this time, I was, you know, doing my best to follow inspiring teachings, put in the work of the meditation, going to therapy, practicing the DBT skills, practicing my expression, journaling, you know, communicating with people, connecting with people, all the things I was doing, dancing, movement, stretching, eating well. Um, but, you know, living in the van, I also had, many of you might know me as kind of like a liver flushing queen, and um, I had had to take a bit of a break from that when I moved into the van, because I just, like, couldn't figure it all out. Like, you need to have running water, you need to be able to do enemas, you need to have a bathroom, you need all these things that, it was just a real big adjustment for me. So I missed, you know, so I was kind of off my routine and rhythm with that. And that's just some context because I just want you to know that, like, I woke up and I felt like I was being tortured upon waking. And I, and then there were the times of the month that got, like, way worse. And I, I was crying a lot throughout the day. I was just, I was, like, struggling to a point where I actually felt quite afraid for my life. And it sort of culminated with my birthday, January 21st, um, and there were some pretty significant things that happened astrologically there with Pluto moving into Aquarius, where it had been in my Capricorn planets for quite a long time. And so it was really, really intense, you know, like my birthday was as horrible as I was afraid it might be, and um, including little Vita almost dying in my arms. Luckily, she didn't, and I didn't die either, which was also not a given. And I made it through. And it was only about a week later that... And meanwhile, I've, like, I started to do liver flushes again, but I wasn't really having, like, that much success with them. And again, it was kind of like... My body had gotten a bit stagnant with it. Anyways, it was after my birthday, about a week later, I did a flush. Maybe I did two days in a row or something like this. And I had a flush that it was again like this breakthrough flush, right? Like I had one about two years ago now in the fall that was like the amount of material I got out of my liver, I was like, things are never going to be the same. Like, I'm never going back, you know? And that was when I actually was, like, really, really inspired to build my program and, like, start helping people do it because I was like, there is no, there is nothing else you can do that literally takes out half a pound of material out of, that's been wedged inside of your organ, you know, in one fell swoop. Like, this is, this is just incredible. And it's a simple, easy tool that we can all be applying in our life, right? So that's when I, you know, had the inspiration to build out the program and start inviting people to join me in the journey of liver flushing. Well, this flush that happened after my birthday was another one of, like, quite significant quantity of material. And I, like, get a little emotional, emotional thinking about it right now because I didn't even know how, you know, I didn't know if it had been a good one because for like the first half of the day I don't even feel good because it's all still in there it hasn't gotten out <clears throat> but I remember having one bowel movement and I was like that was not poop but that was oh that was really big <laughs> and I was like oh my gosh that was liver stones you know they come out in different sometimes they're like intact stones sometimes they're like pressed together they're not really stones they're more like globules bumps um they're putty-like. So so just because it's really big when it all comes out doesn't mean it was exactly like that when it was in your liver. But I passed this, you know, some really, really significant material in, like, one chunk, like, that big. And, and I just knew, like, I felt instantly that something had changed. And, and I think the next day, I literally, like, 
I thought I had so much energy. I had to like run around the dunes, right? I was like skipping. I felt like I, I felt actually like I had like lightness in my body. Like my body was less material and I could like almost fly, but I like wanted to, I was like running around, right? I had so much energy. And of course, most of the time I'm talking about like, I've struggled with chronic fatigue and a lot of things like um, post-exertional delays. That's like a ME thing from having an inflamed brain where like if you exercise you kind of like get punished and like you'll have like way less energy for like long, many days after that well anyways I was just kind of going with it this like crazy energy I felt like a gazelle and um but but and part of the reason I'm coming on today and not sooner is because so from that moment forward I basically feel like I woke up into a different world. And I've been saying this for a while, like, I think I jumped timelines. This is a new reality. I feel reborn. And, and of course, like, there were a confluence of factors, right? There's, like, this astrological thing. There's, like, this birthday thing. There's, there was, like, I attended this Tony Robbins thing. I, you know, was getting sort of, like, this blast off in a new direction. But at the same time, it, you can't really explain away the fact that from that day forward, I woke up in the morning and I didn't feel angry. From that day since, since then, through now, I woke up in the morning and I don't feel scared. I was like feeling so afraid in the morning that sometimes I was too paralyzed to get myself even anything to drink and one of the days I was close enough to my parents house that I like went into the house and I was like dad I'm I'm scared and like I couldn't even explain why you know and the whole horrible confusing scary just process in itself to be witnessing oneself or witnessing one's daughter to be like she's like losing it like she can't even explain what it is that she's afraid of but it's like still very real in the brain and in the body and in the nervous system so ever since then I wake up and there's this like possibility there's this glimmer of like oh my gosh maybe this is a good day maybe I could smile maybe I could start to implement more of these practices and abilities of like focusing on something good of of attending to yeah of attending to something that might bring joy and even without striving for any of that just this sense of like things are okay when I wake up as opposed to feeling like I'm literally being like electrocuted with despair and anxiety and terror sometimes you know and anger so so the reason that I'm coming on now is because, again, I wasn't sure, wasn't sure how much to attribute of this to the liver flush. And, and so, and so it wasn't until a few days ago um, that I did another liver flush. So I actually had, I did two liver flushes since then, and I had no stones come out. Now, I think this is because so much moved that the rest hadn't come down to come out yet and it was packed up in there but for a minute I was like maybe I'm done you know and and then so I waited a little while and then I did another one like four days ago or something and I had some stones and I also had this experience of like feeling a little bit of pressure not really pain but there was something that almost like I had done the flush and I was like when I would breathe I could feel like a little bit of pressure there a little bit of tension somewhere in my liver and I was like hmm, that kind of feels like something's moved but it's kind of like wedged somewhere and it didn't fully get out and that was my experience of the liver flush was that it was it was like you know a little bit came out but something really didn't and for the first time since then I started to wake up in the morning with like a little bit less of that like positive outlook and like capability of joy and so it started to take me like more effort to cultivate my state 
you know, as opposed to like, oh, easy effort to cultivate gratitude and joy. Wow, what a miracle because I've been trying these same things for really long time, right? And all of a sudden, boom, like it's possible, you know? So I just like want to, means a lot to me to, you know, acknowledge myself as like that this is not always, it's not always just this like failure to apply the practices or failure to try hard enough, you know, because when I did this sort of less successful liver flush, which honestly, I should have just sailed on my good, on my good flush for as long as possible, but it's okay because I have this tool. I know how to apply it. So like, I'm going to be fine. I know exactly what to do. And, and patience in the process, you know, like I literally have spent like a year in like crazy amounts of anger and partially that's because the liver stores anger and it's been packed in there since I was a small child you know like a lot of it so here we go like the unpacking of it is not pretty and we don't get a guarantee of when it's over or anything like that so as I experience sort of like the creeping back in of like less energy like more bad vibrations and like more doubt and more heaviness and more of that just um yeah like and like a, like a slight backslide you know in my in my just energy levels but gosh you know like I'm not anywhere near to going back to before that liver flush and I pray to god I never have to go back to that point you know like it got out. I did that. I accomplished getting it out. Wow, you know? And um, so as I witness this sort of like minor backslide, this is what gives me the information. And so I can be sad. Oh, look, I kind of did this to myself. I'm kind of going backwards. But why I'm so grateful about it is because now I have the confirmation that the liver flush is absolutely highly responsible to this complete change of reality and experience for me in my brain right and in my life because things are transforming before my eyes really quickly doors are opening inspiration's coming all of these things are starting to flow right because bile flow equals life flow and so things are flowing on the external as well as on the internal and wow so so now I feel more confident in sharing with you that I had a breakthrough liver flush and I feel like a brand new person in a brand new world. And I want to share this with you because I have a great group of people who are implementing the protocol right now and getting amazing results for themselves too. And I've studied holistic healing modalities and all this stuff for 15 years. And what it led me to is liver flushing because how else... Can you go in there and extricate all of this foreign built up toxic material out of your organs so that it can actually function as it wants to, as it's trying to get the circulation it needs, right? And start to breathe again. And, and in this way, we get more space in our bodies and in our life and in our minds. And so I just want to celebrate the fact that it's Celebrate the fact too that I think I'm really onto something. That it's not just about your discipline. It's not just about saying your thank yous, which is amazing when you can do that, when you're capable of doing that, you know. But sometimes we literally have to address the physical. And if we don't, if we so like you can still do it, right? If you don't address the physical, but when we do address the physical, wow, can you clear the path? wow, can you make it easier on yourself to apply those other tools and skills, you know? Because I just moved out piles of anger that have been keeping me down. <laughs> and there's lots of ways to heal, right? But I just love that this tool is so accessible to us. It involves such cheap ingredients. And we can do it in our own comfort of our own home, even a van. If I can do it in a van, you can do it in a house, you know? So if you've been thinking about it, just, just realize that, like, 
then change can happen at any time. And then what kind of life do you get to live, you know? That stuckness. That stuckness. I relate so much to the stuckness. And that stuckness is stagnation. And it's stuck in there. And we can get it out. We can break it up. We can get it out. We can move forward with our life, right? So if that's something you want and you're interested in, please reach out. I'm totally available to support you if you're dedicated to this process. It does take personal work, dedication, determination, commitment. But I've never seen something that can move the needle like this so quickly. And I'm not removing any organs or losing any pieces. I'm making more room for myself, I think. That is good. So that's the message I wanted to come on and share today. And I'm wishing you all a beautiful day. I'm Sienna Songbird, and may all beings be liberated. <laughs>